Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Keith. I know this isn't how we wanted to meet, but we're going to make the best of it. Okay, welcome to our third grade picnic. Yes, I have a classroom that's got a picnic theme. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, come on. Oh. Here we go. Okay, here's my email. I have, please, during the day, email or dojo me. I try to look at messages right before the school ends and at lunchtime. So if you send me that, I will try to contact you as soon as I can. If you want to contact me by calling me, please call me after school from like 3. I'm usually there till 5. From 3 to 5, that is the best time to call me. Luckily, everybody has signed up for Dojo. All the households have signed up for Dojo. I'm going to be sending all the classroom newsletters, reminders, basic information through Dojo. If you still want it, an email through Harmony, you have to let me know. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be through Dojo. I If I have something specific for your child or pertinent just for your child, I will email it through Harmony or call you, and then I will uh, send a dojo letting you know that I sent you an email. If you have another parent in the household who would like to join, please just send me their address or their uh, cell phone number, and I'll send an invite to them. Thank you. These are our rules, rewards, and consequences. What I want you to look at is, oh, sorry, is the positive rewards. I try to make it as positive as possible. Right now, we're still trying to get in the to learn how to be students. It's been five months, and I'm still trying to get in the rhythm, and I know they are. So I'm trying to do a lot of teaching to them on how to act like a student again how to act in a classroom with all their classmates. So there's going to be a lot of reteaching here. But what I do, I have in my classroom for positive rewards, I give them Keith Bucks. When I see they're doing something fantastic, I give them Keith Bucks. When they turn their homework in or when um, they do really well on their work when they've been kind to someone, when they're sitting still and the rest of the class is going crazy, I will give out Keith Bucks whenever I am very happy with their behavior. And if they get so many Keith Bucks, they can buy things with them. So for the treasure chest is 25 Keith Bucks. We do that on Fridays. They can eat in the room for 75 Keith Bucks. Um, I'm going to ask to make sure we can still do that. If I do it, I'll make sure that they're six feet apart. That's usually a great way to get them to um, keep their Keith Bucks. They like to get those Keith Bucks to eat in the classroom. They have other things they can do. We also have Fun Friday. Every week, there's 20 minutes up on the board in half-minute increments, and if they're doing something, the majority of the class is doing something that's not quite what should be do, they should be doing, I'll go and I'll pull one of the half minutes. And then I'll count down by five. If they're still doing it. I keep pulling until they get quiet or they get where they need to be. Um, and I'll also put back minutes if they're doing something, the whole class is doing something great that... I really appreciate. They can earn those minutes back. And then at the end of the week, however minutes are up on the board, that's how many minutes they have for a fun Friday at the end of the day. On Friday, it's like an indoor recess. and They love fun Friday. This is our curriculum. Our reading block, our reading series covers spelling, language, and cursive. For spelling, I will be doing Spelling City. I bought the subscription. Um, if you want to do it at home, I can give you all the information, the username and password. Just let me know. Writing, we're going to be doing something called Ape Peck. I know in second grade they learned Ape. We're going to be doing Ape Peck. It's for reading constructed responses. That's where that's a reading response. And after they learn this, you're going to look at these responses and go, 
wow, that's amazing for third grade. And it's scripted and it's it really is a great way to get these kids to get into the uh, the reading and answer these questions appropriately. Um, <clears throat> language, the DOL, your child will go through two sentences a day, Monday through Thursday. I'm going to pick two of those sentences for Friday, and they will have to correct two of those sentences. We will also have a language packet we do every day. And then on the back on Friday of that test is um, the skills. They have to answer questions based on that skill. Then on the front, you will also have, they, the kids will also have a skill that like which sentence is punctuated correctly or which sentence is a sentence or a fragment. Stuff they'll have to do for the I learn. It's based on I learn skills. Okay, I'm going on. Go math. I'm going to send you a video about go math and what they're trying to do with go math, the common core. My husband and I still get in arguments about it. He's like, just teach them how to do it. Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get them to do number sense, to understand numbers. Why do they do that algorithm? Why do they add that those two numbers? Why do they multiply those two numbers? And then how do they do it? And I'm trying to get the kids to understand that with math, there are so many different ways to solve problems. It's so fun to sit there and say, okay, here's the problem. Hey, now how did you solve it? Now, wait a minute. How did you solve it? Now, how did you solve it? And you would be amazed how many different ways these kids come to the same conclusion. And the way they do it are right, is right. I'll send you a video. There's this great video I want you to see about this. Um, I, I don't want them just to know the algorithms. I want them to understand why those algorithms work. Okay. Science will only be taught in uh, the second semester. We won't even have it before Christmas. Okay. Social studies will be first semester. Science will be second semester. Success period is when we will get together and, and this is where the kids will be working individually based on their needs. I will pull small groups as needed. Otherwise, the other ones will be working uh, on an individualized basis. It's a great way for me to get to work with all of the kids. Okay? I'm glad they've built that into the schedule. Community building. Like I said, we've been gone for five months. That's a long time. And we are separated so much. We are together as a classroom. We need to build that relationship as a classroom. I want our classroom to be a family. <clears throat> um, so we have built in the community building time. It's first thing in the morning where we talk to each other and learn about each other. And right now we're just saying hello to you, to each other. We'll just turn and we'll say hello and make sure they're making eye contact. That's hard for eight and nine-year-olds, and especially ones who've been away from each other for five months. For them to turn and look and say, look in their eyes and say, hello, how are you? That's, that's a skill that they are learning right now. So um, you can practice that at home. And then STEM, STEM focus. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. We're going to be really heavy on technology this year because they're going to learn a lot about the computer. Um, but every nine weeks, we have a STEM project that is based on problem solving, which is wonderful. Okay. PBIS, positive behaviors. That's what we're looking for. We are reinforcing, reinforcing positive behaviors. We are reteaching to get those positive behaviors instead of immediately going to consequence. We say, okay. How should you have done that? What did you do wrong? Let's think about this. What should you have done? Or we're looking, we're trying to build perseverance. Instead of I can't, we want to say I can't yet, but I'm going to get there. I want to see your child persevere. Okay. Some kids are just like, oh, I, I see the problem just melts down. 
I can't do this. I was like, nope, you got to try and figure it out. I want to know what your brain is thinking right now. Okay, afterwards, we can sit down and talk it out, but I want you to try it first. Okay, so that's what we're building. Also, um, we're still going to have the student of the month and all stars at the end of the year. We are still doing the shining moments and the shoot for the star, the little gold slips. And it's been amazing so far that they've been giving gold slips to each other. And I think that's fabulous because we're, they are reinforcing that, hey, I noticed that you did a good thing for me. So I'm going to give you that gold slip. I love, I love to see that. E-learning days. Who knows? We'll see. We'll have to see if the what happens. But if we are still in school, September 30th will be our first e-learning day. We'll just keep an eye on it. Okay. So write down those days just in case. Okay. Homework expectation, expectations. Homework will be giving given. It will be given Monday through Thursday. I do not give it on the weekend ever. Um, spelling, always go over every night if you can. Like I said, I've got Spelling City. If you need the username and password, I'll gladly give it to you. Um, math Facts and Reteach, that will be on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. That math will be given on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And then I always do reading on Wednesdays because I want you to not only know what your child is learning in math, I want you to know what they're learning in reading and be able to see the stories and what their level should be at that time. Okay, so they'll have to read this passage to you or with you. You can help them <clears throat> and then answer questions at the end. Okay, Ho uh, homework will be reviewed. Okay. Uh, homework not completed will be given an incomplete or I'll make your child spend five minutes at recess doing it or during fun Friday. If they don't turn it in. They're going to, they're still going to get it done one way or the other. I've had a lot of kids say, uh, I didn't get my homework done or, uh, my parents took the homework out of my backpack. Well, um, please just remind your child, make sure it gets in your in their backpack. It really is your child's responsibility to make sure it gets there. But at this age, it's good to give them a reminder. And I will, from now on, I've got a sheet that I can do a homework check-in. When they come in in the morning, they put their homework down and I can check in if they've brought it in. I'm going to be doing that. And if they don't have it, then I can remind them myself to turn it in. Okay. Harmony. You can check Harmony for current grades. You can set alerts for grades. I'm not sure how to do that because I don't have the parent end on mine. All my kids are 30 from 25 to 32 years old. I don't have Harmony. So, um, but I can find out for you. If you don't know how to set the alerts, let me know and I will uh, find out. Okay. The weekly assignments will be entered on Monday. It may be very late on Monday. But I will, that's my goal, to get them in on Monday every week, okay? Um, midterms will not be sent out. So please, please, please be checking your child's grades weekly. Uh, um, yeah, I don't want you to be surprised at the end of the year. Because at the beginning of the year, I do a lot of, okay, let's go through this together. Then we work to... Nope, you get it done yourself. You can do this, okay? I'm trying to build their independence. And in that building, their grades may change. So I want you to be aware of this, okay? I want to get them ready for the more independence in fourth grade, okay? So that's why I do it. I'm trying to wean them from my help, okay? Vacations. For one day absent, you're allowed one day to complete schoolwork. Two days absent, two days to complete the work. Okay. Uh, please just have your child bring it in and I will check it. If you're going to miss for vacation, you need to get a prearranged absence form and I'll send it with your child. 
and then you can send it back that for the office to know. Um, and if you're going to leave for vacation and would like your child's work beforehand, please, please, please give me time to do it. Uh, give me ample time to get it together. That's all I ask. Okay. All right. COVID. We're trying. We are trying so hard. It's hard for eighth graders or for eight, eight year olds, sorry, eight year olds, uh, eight, nine year olds to keep the face masks on and to keep the social distancing. We're trying our very, very best. The only times face masks aren't worn are when we're sitting at our desks, we're facing forward. I will give them that break. I'll say, okay, you can take your face mask off just for a break. But if you move, you're supposed to mask. Um, we sometimes forget, but we're trying. And I love the accountability because their friends will say, hey, face masks. Um, they don't have face masks on during PE, recess, or when they eat or when they're sitting forward at their desk. Other times they always have it on. Please try to keep those clean uh, every day. If you need another face mask, let me know. We have some at, available at school. Same with the water bottles. The water fountains are taped off. They cannot get to them. Now, we only have two water bottle filling stations. They're, they are expensive, so we only have two. Please, please, please try to have your child's water bottle filled each day um, when they come to school. Make sure that it is a tight <laughs> fitting lid. I don't know how many water bottles have exploded in backpacks so far. So you can put it on the outside of the backpack if there's a little pouch, something or some kind of container to make sure that the water bottle is uh, safely sealed. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, um, they each student has ba has a basket. That's where they keep their water bottle. That's where they keep their daily snacks, their lanyard, their um, Lysol wipes, anything that belongs to them. Their Keith Bucks go in this basket. It is their basket. No one else is supposed to touch it. Um, they bring their snacks in every day. If you want to bring a week's worth of snacks in, that's fine. They can keep four days in their locker and then grab it out. But don't do more than a week's worth because we have little critters, little Stuart Littles all over that come out during the winter. Um, so, yeah, just keep them separate and individual. And right now, <clears throat> I've had a supply of snacks. And I've had a few parents bring in some snacks. I have to hold it for 72 hours uh, if, a, if you want to uh, provide some snacks. But um, I don't want your child to rely on that. Okay, There was one year I brought in snacks. I felt so bad for those kids. I brought in snacks because I didn't want any kid to go without by the end of the year. They got so used to me providing for them that... I was providing for three-fourths of the class every day. My husband was not happy. So try to get in the habit or of asking your child, do you have your snack? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, classes remain together at PE. We have our separate area we stay in. I don't even know the names of most of the kids in all the other classes. That's how much we are segregated. Okay. Um, we have separate clinics. We have a well clinic. We have a uh, another clinic. That's where the kids with the COVID-related symptoms go to. And then we have the well clinic. So, like, if your child has uh, what needs to take medicine, they go into that clinic so they're not around all of the other kids who may have symptoms. Okay. We wash our hands frequently. The desks are cleaned, every, sterilized every day, every night. We wash them with our Lysol wipes, our, our individual Lysol wipes. So we try to keep our area sanitized. Okay. I learn and I read. Who knows what's going to happen with this? Who knows? But if we have a typical year, this is what's going to happen. I, uh, I learn. That's the big one. 
That's the one from third to, I don't even know what it goes up to now. It changes so much. But we start it in third grade. It is given once a year in mid-April. It's computer-based, which means they take it entirely on the computer. It is adaptive, which means that it goes with, it's not just like one question for everybody. It, it follows how your child, if your child answers this, then it may go up or it may go down according to how your child answers it. And it's not timed. They can take as long as they need to take it. So that pressure is off. The next one is the I read. I read three. We're the only grade level that gives this test. It is based, it is checking to see that your child can read by the end of third grade. In third grade, you go from learning to read to reading to learn. Fourth grade, that's all they do is reading to learn. They have to be able to go over that hump so they can be successful in fourth grade. So that's why they give that test in third grade, because we are making that leap. So they will be given that test in March, and it will cover comprehension skills and phonics and some language art skills like homophones or vocabulary. Okay, this is pass or fail. They'll either do it or not. And if they don't pass it the first time, they will have a second chance to pass it in June. Okay, I don't know what the consequences are if they don't pass it in June anymore. I know with all of this going on, I will let you know as soon as I, as soon as I hear. Okay. Um, it's changed for the past few years and I don't want to tell you something that may not be accurate. So as soon as I find out what happens, I will let you know, but I will tell you that 90% of 95% is you is the usual score for passing in third grade. Okay. So just take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. Okay. It will be fine. Okay. And I will do my best to make sure your child gets the skills they need to pass this. AR reading. Oh, goodness. I put on their students will get 30 points this year. I want your child to get 40 points. Ooh, I'm going to change that. Students will get 40 points this school year. 20 for the first semester, 20 for the second semester. It is your child's responsibility to reach this goal. I will send out reading goal sheets every month that will tell you where your child is at. Okay. I want you to go through it with them. I, I send a list of all the books they have read for that month. I will send it to you so you can see where they are at. Now, in December, there is usually a school-wide event for those who reach half their yearly goal. It's usually the bouncy houses. We'll see what this year holds. But there will be something at in December. They must have 20 points to go. I have had a number of kids not go because they did not reach 20 points. Now, if your child says, but I don't have time, that's not true. When they come in the morning, they can grab their computer. They can take their tests. Whenever we have reading stations, whenever they have free time, they are more than allowed. They are allowed to take tests. They have time to take tests. Okay. So if they tell you that, that's not accurate. And you can tell them to come see me and I will help them find a time. Okay. Now in May, there will be a reward for those who reach their yearly AR goal. It was usually the swim party at Weibo. Hopefully the pool will be done and we can go do a swim party. That would be so much fun to be in the new pool. Now I can't guarantee you that's what it's going to be, but it will be something. Okay, those who do not read will not reach their goal. Therefore, they will not go to the reading events if their goal is not met. Okay, they have to read. They have to take the test. I do read alouds. 
I, I love read alouds. We've already read one chapter book and we've already taken a test over one chapter book. I just read Third Great Angels. I'm in the middle of The World According to Humphrey. I love to read aloud. Those are free points if they just sit and take the tests. Okay. Also, we take tests over all the weekly, uh, the bi weekly tests and um, the leveled readers. I'm giving them a lot of opportunity to get points. Okay. They, I, they need to take some tests on their own also, okay? It is their responsibility, All right? Extras. Right now, all field trips are canceled. I know, it kills me. Field trips are canceled until further notice. Snacks, students bring their own, and there are no volunteers until further notice. That kills me because I love to have parent volunteers come in to help me make copies, to laminate, even to work with the kids. Um, so whenever any of those restrictions are lifted, I promise you, I will let you know. Okay. Now, parents, after you have viewed this, if you have any questions, you can email me or I will send you that link for Tuesday and um, you can, um, we can talk about it then. The link is going to be for everybody, so it may be a question everybody has. That would be great. If you just have a personal question, you can just email me, and I will try to contact you later. Now, if you ever want to contact me, just let me know, okay? And if you want to have a call, um, just or any concerns whatsoever, please let me know, okay? I would much rather hear it from you than to see it on Facebook. If there is something that is concerning you, please come to me first. And I will try my best. It may be something I didn't even realize. Or maybe you don't quite know my uh, the other side of the story. So please, please, please contact me first. Uh, before you go to Facebook. And just so you know, I will never, ever, ever put your child on Facebook. Um, that is for you to do. It is not for me to do. <clears throat> um, I love your children and I think it's going to be a phenomenal year. Okay. Thank you so much.